What's up everybody, Aaron C here, and in this build video we're going to be going over the Magicka Sork PvE DPS build for the Dragon Bones patch. Magicka Sorks are really strong this patch with the ability to pull over 60k single target DPS. So let's get started right away. Going over our stats, we're sitting at 44.1k max Magicka, 15.3k max health, 2.7k spell damage, and 42% spell crit. Now our spell crit is going to be over 60% during combat because we're using the mechanical acuity set and I'll go over that in a little bit later. All of our points are into Max Magicka. I am a High Elf, I recommend being a High Elf because you get the same exact amount of damage as a Dark Elf would with more sustain, so I do recommend being High Elf for sure. We're using the Apprentice Mundus in groups that don't have perfect debuff sets, use the Lover, however Apprentice is the best if your group has Power of the Light. Alkosh, and Infuse Crusher from the main tank. I recommend being a vampire for the Magicka Recovery passive and the Undeath passive, but you don't really have to be if you don't want to. The food we're using is Clockwork Citrus Filet, which mothers is also acceptable. It just gives you a little bit less stats. And the Essence of Spell Power are the pots that we're going to be using on this build, which give you Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, and Major Intellect. Now let's go over the gear. On the front bar, we're going to have the Asylum Perfected Inferno Staff. Now I use three infused staffs in my rotation on my Sork. The first one is a Flame Damage Enchant. This is good for pretty much any content that you do. The second one is Absorb Magic Enchant. Anytime you have either healers not sustaining your magic well enough with orbs, shards, and Ellie Drain, or you're just having trouble sustaining, you can use this, it's going to help you tremendously and not a big DPS loss. And lastly, a Daedric Damage Enchant. It's going to do a ton more damage to Daedra and Undead. So on fights where you're fighting those, make sure you use this enchant like Rakat, Rokatsu and Helra, or the first two bosses in Ethereum Archive. If you don't have the Asylum Perfected Inferno, you can either use Moon Dancer with 3 piece Jewelry. Same with Master Architect or Aether, Staves with 3-piece Jewelry, or you can use a non-perfected, but those are all less DPS than using a perfected Inferno Staff, so make sure you grind that. On the back bar, we're going to have the Maelstrom Inferno Staff, also infused with a Berserker Damage Enchant. This is the best single target staff that you can use on your back bar. Don't use Nern Honed. Don't use a Lightning Staff unless your healers and tanks are not keeping up Lightning Blockades enough then you would have to use the Lightning Staff. However, the Maelstrom Inferno Staff is going to give you the most damage possible. If you don't have Maelstrom Staff, grind it. If you're still having trouble, just use a Crafted Staff, that's fine as well. For the Monster Set, we're using Lambrus. It is the best still on a Magic Sork. The other options would be either Narayaneth, or if you're doing sit solo content, you can use Slime Crop. For our main 5-piece set, we're going to use the Mechanical Acuity set. It is tremendously amazing, this patch. It's best in slot on pretty much all the builds that you're ever going to use that are going full damage. The other options would be Giuliano's, Burning Spell V, or Skating Mage. But again, Mechanical Acuity is by far the best, so make sure you get yourself a set of this. You want to make sure you have 5 one, one, 5 Light, 1 Medium, 1 Heavy. Preferably heavy on the chest, but it doesn't really matter. It's not a big difference if you have it somewhere else. And lastly, for the three piece of jewelry, we're using willpower. It is the best damage possible. However, Moon Dancer, Aether, and Master Architect are not far behind in damage. However, if you have willpower, which everyone should, use it. It's best damage. That's it for the gear. Now let's go over the skills. And now for the skill bars, I give all the credit to Andy S. He's been. Uh, using the skill bar setup and having amazing results. So again, all the credits go to him. And I'll go over why we have liquid lighting on front bar, which could be weird for some people in a second. Inner light is our first skill. It gives you 5% in itself for Max Magicka and 2% Max Magicka Magicka Recovery from the Mage's Guild Passive Magicka Controller. Bound Aegis is our next skill. This is gonna give you 8% more Max Magicka. Nothing more need to be said. Make sure you have a double barred it's a toggleable ability. Next again is Liquid Lightning. It's one of your strongest AoE and single target ground dots. Make sure you keep this up 100% of the time. And again, I'll go over why we have it front barred in a second. 
Crystal Frag is our next skill that we're using on the front bar. You only want to use this when it's proc. And what I mean by that is when you're using a skill, there's a chance to proc the Crystal Frag, which is a purple glow around your arms that you see now. Once it procs, then you shoot it as one of your spammables. Lastly, Force Pulse is our main spammable on our front bar. And you just want to spam with light attacks as pretty much your main spammable ability. Lastly, for the ultimate, you have two options. The first option is the Greater Storm Astronaut, and the second option is Shooting Star. Now, in single target fights, Storm Astro is going to give you a little bit more damage. Not only that, but it's also going to give you a, a Charge with Lightning Synergy, which one of your allies can use to gain Major Berserk, which increases their damage down by 25%. So if you have a strong Nightblade in the group that is in melee range all the time, he uses that synergy, gives them a huge damage boost. If it's not a single target fight, use Shooting Star or just spam Destral on your backboard. However, again, for single target, Greatest Storm Metro is definitely the best ultimate you can use. For the back bar, if you need a shield, I recommend using Empowered Ward. Unless somebody already has Empowered Ward, then you can use Hardened Ward. The reason why is because it's going to give you 10% magic recovery for 10 seconds. It only stacks once, so no point of having more than one Empowered Ward in the group. Otherwise, use Hardened Ward or Harness. And if you don't need a shield, just use Inner Light to get more magic on the back bar as well. Second skill, Bound Vegas again. Again, this is a toggle ability, so you want to have a double bard. Next is Blockade of Fire or Blockade of Lightning, whichever staff that you're using. One of your strongest dots, usually it's going to be at the top of your DPS meter. Make sure you keep this up 100% of the time. Haunting Curse is going to explode twice in 12 seconds. Keep this up anytime it has the chance to explode twice, even during execute. And lastly, Mage's Wrath is your execute ability. When a target hits 20% or lower, you use this as your main spell instead of Force Pulse and Frags. And lastly, Fiery Rage is our Destral ult. On our back bar, you want to use this in any AoE fights, in AoE situations, and on Trash. That's it for the skills, let's go over the rotation. So the rotation is going to work like this. Now let me explain to you why we have Liquid Lightning front bar. The reason why Liquid Lightning is on our front bar is because we want to use this before we bar swap. Because when you use the Force Pulse with the Asylum Staff, the second pulse always procs the set bonus, which is every second cast of Force Shock will always apply the Burning, Concussion, and Shield status effects within 10 seconds of one another. If you bar swap, this effect doesn't get applied. So you're losing a ton of damage. So before you bar swap, you usually want to use any ability before bar swapping. So you can use either Crystal Frags or Liquid Lightning to be always dependable. And that is why Liquid Lightning is on our front bar. So the rotation is going to look like this. We have two parts to this rotation. The first part is where you apply all three dots, which is Liquid Lightning, Blockade, and Curse. And on the second part, you're only going to use Liquid Lightning and Blockade. Again, you don't want to bar swap too much when you're using Force Pulse, otherwise you'll use, lose that Asylum proc. So here's how it's going to work. Light Attack Liquid, Light Attack Blockade, Light Attack Curse, and then you do 5 Samables, which is either Force Pulse or Crystal Frags when they proc. After your 5th one, you go back into the rotation and do the 2nd part, which is Light Attack Liquid Lightning, Bar Swap Light Attack Blockade, Bar Swap again, and this time we use 6 Samables and don't reapply Curse because it's going to explode twice mid-rotation. And then we go back into the first one, Liquid Lightning, Blockade, Curse, 5 Spammables, use Frags anytime they proc, and the second part which is Liquid Lightning, Blockade, Bar Swap again, and 6 Spammables, and so on and so forth. Now to min-max your damage, before going into the fight, what you want to do is you want to use Inner Light to empower your heavy attack, then you're going to use a fully charged heavy attack, and drop your ultimate, and then start with your rotation liquid, blockade, curse, five spammables. And then we start on the second part, liquid, blockade, make sure you're light attacking between every skill. And then this six spammables. Now, 
When the target hits lower than 20%, you want to go into your execute rotation, which is almost the same, but you're going to spend a little bit more time on your back bar. And it's going to look like this. You're going to do a liquid lightning. You're going to do a blockade. You're going to do a curse. And instead of using force pulls and frags, you'll just leave this five times on the first rotation and six times on the second rotation. So your execute rotation is going to look something like this. Once this dummy comes back up, there it is. So this is would be your execute rotation. Light attack liquid, light attack blockade, light attack curse, five weaves of the execute. Then we start again, liquid lightning, blockade, now this time six weaves because we don't want curse to overlap. And then we go again, liquid, blockade, curse, and so on and so forth. So the rotation is dynamic, there is not much to it once you learn it, once you practice it, anybody can get it. It's not too much change or tracking, so it's very easy to do on console, PC, wherever it is you play. Lastly, let's go over the champion points. So the red tree is always going to change depending on the trial that you're doing, but this is a very balanced CP that works pretty much for any trial. You're going to use 61 in Ironclad, 26 Spell Shield, 40 into Thick Skin, 49 Hardy and Elemental Defender, and 15 to Quick Recovery. For the green tree, I'm using 100 Arcanist, 100 Tenacity. I know the last 25 points only give you 1%, however, sustain is sustain, even if it's 1%, I want it. Then we have 20 points into Shadow Ward and 20 points into Tumbling just to help our survivability and blocking and quit. For the blue tree, 51 Alphorn, 49 Ellie Expert, 25 Spell Erosion, 40 Master at Arms, and on Sork we still use Off Balance CP. It does give you a little bit more burst in shorter fights and over sustained fights, it does good damage as well. So I do recommend using the Exploiter Passive from having 75 points in Thaumaturge. However, having 40 points in the Thaumaturge, a little bit more points in Master at Arms, and Ellie Expert and Elfborn work as well, just as well. So that's pretty much it for the build video. If this helped you out, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. I am going to be releasing a lot more build videos and content in the future. So again, stay tuned for the next one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.